Well, Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Today is um, Thursday, December the 31st of 2015. And I may have just found the find of the century at Value Village. That's right, folks. I may have found something that, well, I thought I would never see with my own eyes. It's something I've seen in videos and pictures, but never in person. And I now own one, the entire system. Let's open my trunk and see. Here it is, folks. From 1981, the first personal computer ever made. The IBM 5150, complete with the computer, monitor, and keyboard. All for $16, folks. Can you believe it? Don't know if it works or not. It's a little bit grungy looking. But we're going to take it in and see what happens when we turn it on. So, be right back, folks. All right, now we can get a better look at my amazing find for the day, or probably my life, um, until I get a girlfriend, that is. <laughs> this is, indeed, the first PC ever made. IBM Personal Computer 5150. Again, it's a little bit grungy looking. So I get seen some action over the past, uh, I guess, 35 years or so things way older than me and here's the back of it there's its name tag there IBM 5150 plug power into here you plug your monitor power into here that's which is pretty cool and again I got the monitor as well for this plug keyboard here and some kind of auxiliary thing here it says cassette I'm not sure if there ever was any type of cassette interface for this or not but um that's, I want to say that's serial, uh, here's the, the video card, um, it's probably monochrome, I imagine, um, actually I'm sure it's monochrome, uh, but you'd need it if it's a Hercules card, and another type of interface card right here. And here's the, uh, original keyboard for the system, it's, uh, really nice mechanical key switches built in. This was back before the um, F keys were on top. They were actually on the left back then. And I'm having to record off electrical power right now. Um, so let me go grab the uh, monitor. We'll take a quick look at it. All right, here's the monitor. IBM Personal Computer Color Display. Don't know if this works either. Got some controls here. Um, again... Just like with that Tandy 1000 I showed earlier this year, I am a total noob when it comes to computers from the 80s. So I'll probably be saying a lot of stupid things in this video that will probably be horribly incorrect. So I apologize in advance for all that. Okay, here's the back of the monitor. There's a power cord there. And our video connector right there and some vertical uh, vertical and horizontal uh, adjustments and here's the uh, info tag there if you're interested it's a uh, 5153 monitor again not too familiar with all this but um presumably this does not have a hard drive um, keep in mind in the early 1980s hard drives were all practically non-existent I guess well they were there around but they were extremely expensive so uh, so for operating systems um, you have to load it from a five and a quarter inch floppy disk which um, I have um, I'm gonna have to make them I'll probably have to find a spare five and a quarter inch floppy drive to put in one of my Packard Bells to make a like a MS DOS 3 boot disk to boot into this assuming that this does work so yeah um i hope this works folks let's see what happens okay folks we got everything hooked up 
And, by the way, we have a Mr. J. Wakefield with us. Hey. <laughs> so, I'm getting nervous here, folks. Um, okay. I probably should have opened this computer up first to check it inside, but um, I'm just really, really excited here. I think we turned the monitor on with this. Okay, no six-foot flames yet. And, well, folks, there's no going back now. Smoke test! I'm getting a blinking cursor. Yeah, those old ones did not have the back of yeah, it's like, uh, I'm seeing blue, green, and red blocks blinking. Hmm. Hope that's a good thing. Okay, it's doing something. The IBM Personal Comp Basic. Oh, well. Okay, we booted into its built-in operating system, which is um, located in RAM, according to Jay. Yeah, it boots, um, it boots to an IBM Basic if you don't have a bootable disk in the drive. Which hopefully I'll get pretty soon once I put the floppy drive, the five and a quarter inch floppy drive in that Packard Bell down there in a little bit. Um, Okay, keyboard. Does it work? Yes, it does. I can't believe this, folks. I think it actually works. Uh, monitor needs to be adjusted a little bit, though, but... I think I have to adjust the vertical and horizontal from the back of it, but... Yeah, folks, this is a very good sign. Let's see what this does. Unidentified command number. Oh well, that's good enough for now. Um, besides, my battery's running dead. So, um, we will resume in a minute. Thanks to the magic of video editing. Alright, we're back and I've done a few more things with this um, IBM 5150. Um, not only do we have Jay with us now, we also have an Elmo 3. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and I've been um, making a few um, floppy disks um, with for this computer to boot off of. The floppy drive, both floppy drives work perfectly. There are the disks right there I've been using. I need to label them still. I've been making them with um, a version of Win Image for Windows 3.1 with this second Packard Bell 822 CDT I got a couple of months ago. I added a five and a quarter inch floppy drive in there just for this computer to, to make this for them. And, well, first let's turn the monitor off so that doesn't interfere. Let's go ahead and um, fire this uh, 5150 back up. Just put, put it up on my new tripod, folks. Yes, that's right. I got a new tripod for Christmas finally. Adjustments there. That's Jay's WhatsApp. Ah, uh, sorry about that. You should be. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Let me crawl over here. And let's and let us partake in a little bit of. 1980s computing. Computing that predates me and the rest of us in the Skype call, actually. It's older than everybody here. Yeah. It'll be 35 next year, I believe. It doesn't, um, it uh, doesn't predate Keza, though. 
Vasquez that predates it. <laughs> All right, folks. Switch the monitor on. Unfortunately, I will say um, I have a feeling that this monitor is prob probably wanting to um, kick the bucket because um, I can't get it to stretch um, horizontally. Thankfully, worst case scenario, I could just hook up a like a little television set to the um, composite output on here. So um, we, we got that going for it. Um, I think this is my DOS 3.0 um, boot disk. I need to label these, so I'll go ahead and stick it in the drive there. Lock it in place, and we'll fire it up with the red switch. Yeah, Luca has that beautiful red switch. Oh yeah. <laughs> takes a while for it to boot up. Don't worry about the um, price tag on the screen. I'll just wipe it off. And then again, this monitor didn't really work right anyway, so it doesn't matter. Takes a little bit. It's a beautiful sound, isn't it? All right. Wants us to enter the current date. Um, keep in mind, um, this was act this computer was actually built before CMOS batteries. So every time you would you would turn one of these on, you would have to manually put in the date each time. So today is 12-31 of 2015. Time is 17-19. Uh, Alright. As you can see, the monitor is eh, not very healthy, unfortunately, but um, it but it works well enough to show us the computer does indeed work. Show what version of DOS we're running, if you'll be able to see it or not. DOS version 3.30 from 1987. And, you know what? I don't know if this is the right disc or not, but we're going to play a game on it. This is the only game I've got for it so far. We'll switch to drive B. And this is the IBM 5153 monitor, actually, the color one. Because this actually has a CGA video card in it, which is pretty nice. Do a directory on here. Uh, nope, not that one. So it must be this one. I've had trouble getting used to this keyboard. <laughs> Loud computer too. We have Paratrooper from the from 1982, I believe. Such a simple game right here. You are dead. Hey, paratroopers, welcome to die! <laughs> welcome to die! <laughs> the interesting thing about paratroopers is that it's not CPU dependent, believe it or not. I know, because I've run it on um, Packard Bells before. Oh, good grief. I hate it when that bomber comes by and blows you up. Oh, I know. I ran it on uh, the desk pro. No, I didn't. I ran it on the. Uh, LTE 5280, which yeah. is clocked at 120 megahertz. I've run it on a Pentium MMX before, so I'm so it'll run perfectly fine with Tabasco sauce. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, for, as speaking of the monitor, um, I know um, 
that there might be controls built inside for the horizontal adjustment, but I don't feel safe enough cracking open a, mo a CRT monitor because it those things can kill people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's um... killed by television. <laughs> Okay, one more thing I want to show. For it was written on that YouTube video. Ow, that really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Do a control alt delete. Even even seasoned professionals get bitten from time to time. I mean, it's happened to John's arcade numerous yeah. times. Yeah, it happens. This happened to me, but never from a CRT. Uh, for, for me, it's been from the wall. <laughs> Does, yeah, I've, I've, I've been bitten by a plumber. I think I got bit by a surge protector once. So okay, guys, here it comes. That music there amuses me so much. <clears throat> You'll find the personal computer to be a very patient and capable teacher. Not when it sounds like butts on PC animal. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, no hard drive in this system, or no, 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 um, no hard drive is able to be put oh, in the yeah. system. <laughs> Stay tuned for <laughs> chapter one. This lesson has pages and chapters, just like a book. You can page both forward and backward or skip around from chapter to chapter. Let's see how it's done. Press the page down key at any time to see the next page. Go ahead go ahead and try it. Okay. Alright. Page up. Down. You know what just occurred to me? What? This is the original version of, of the lesson on using the mouse. <laughs> oh, good grief it is. Back before you had a mouse. <laughs> Thanks to programs like this, you got welcome from Packard Bell. Exactly. Oh. New meeting. Press page down for being too close. And guess what, guys? I'm bored. <laughs> it's not a very interesting program. Yeah, once you're past oh. that musical intro, it's kind of... Uh, <laughs> All right, I guess that'll about do it for this video. Um, I'll don't, don't worry, this will de most definitely not be the last video involving this computer. We've got to clean this up and uh, play with some more programs and maybe hook a TV up to it to get a better display from it than this um, poor monitor. But um, yeah, that's the IBM 5150. I, I cannot believe I own one. I, I, I've never really been in the market for one either, but... I, I knew they were a big deal. I knew they were the first personal computer ever, so I knew that was a or IBM's idea of it anyway. But um, no, you that me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll do some final thoughts here. Um, what do you got to say, Luke? Well, you got the ultimate museum history piece there. You got a, fi a fifty-one thirty. You got a fi fifty-one fifty-three. My bad. <laughs> fifty-one fifty. The Model F keyboard, the original Buckling Spring one, I believe. Yep, right that, here. That, that's, that's one of the best finds I've heard of from a thrift store in a long time. I know. <laughs> I would knock it off. <laughs> 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 so, 
so, sorry, I was doing that still game medish troll thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and <clears throat> Jay? Everything Luke said is completely true. I mean, it's it's basically Genesis as far as computers are concerned. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you bought the original Macintosh, it would be SNES. That's a that's a good song, but yeah. <laughs> it's um yeah, no, I I, I do <clears throat> I do very much like the machine. It's um you know got a few wee quirks that are pretty good and yeah, I mean, it's it's like, yeah, four, col uh, four colours, you might scoff at it, but if you connect it up to a television using composite out, I might add, because, yeah, um, you know, you, as opposed to connect it, connecting it up using the HDMI part in the back of that thing, that isn't there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it has a display port, actually. Oh, so the display part that it's got. Yeah. <laughs> That's even better then. <laughs> but if you connect it using composite out, the computer can use some trickery to display more colours. Yeah. And certain games actually take advantage of that, like Burger Time and King's Quest. I think King's Quest does. I can't even mind. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of potential to mess around with that machine. Even if the monitor doesn't work, you can still use it. Yeah, just hook up. I, I guess I can just hook it up to my TV. It's a kind of an inside joke there, but um. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this one's even easier to hook up to a TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But um. Hit me port. <laughs> but yeah, I am just very very excited about this. There's. So much stuff I need to do with this, so much stuff I want to do with this that it's really exciting. Um, there will be plenty of videos involving this computer. you got to believe that. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to have so, a lot of fun with this. It's so much fun that it should be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Um, I, I guess we'll leave it there. Happy New Year, everyone. We'll see you in 2016. This is Billy Kors signing off.